Canada is one of the world's main food suppliers thanks to its developed agriculture. The country is also among the top five countries in the world in food production and export thanks to its leadership in innovation and application of technology in agricultural production with the direction of sustainability. This opens up a lot of potential for cooperation with Vietnam, a country that has advantages in agriculture and is Canada's biggest trade partner in ASEAN. Canada's first ever Indo-Pacific Agriculture and Agri-Food Office, or IPAAO, was officially opened in February 2024. It is a joint initiative between Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada and the Canadian Food Inspection Agency as part of an ongoing commitment to bolster ties, advance technical cooperation, assist Canadian exporters in finding new business opportunities with countries in the region, including Vietnam. So the Indo-Pacific strategy, first of all, is a signal of Canada's long-standing commitment to the region. And it is a desire to strengthen the relationship between the people uh, in our countries, as well as to strengthen commercial cooperation and collaboration, and to increase the political and security ties between our two nations. And pillar two of Canada's Indo-Pacific strategy is really about strengthening trade and investment cooperation. So the opening of Canada's Indo-Pacific Agriculture and Agri-Food Office is a key component of that second pillar. And in terms of agricultural cooperation, it is one of the core areas of Canada-Vietnam relations. We've always had uh, a strong record of trade between Canada and Vietnam, but with some recent uh, initiatives that have taken place, not only the Indo-Pacific strategy, but of course the successful conclusion and ratification of the CPTPP, it has created new opportunities for Canada-Vietnam trade with the removal of tariffs. So my visit here serves multiple purposes. One, it's to raise awareness that Canada's new Indo-Pacific Agriculture and Agri-Food Office has now been established and that we are here to strengthen the ties between Canada and Vietnam. And we hope to do that in a number of ways. One is on a regulatory basis. So my office has two uh, specialized teams that uh, are housed at the office. One is technical experts from the Canada Food Inspection Agency and they will be able to have regulatory conversations with their counterparts and engage in technical exchanges. And that will serve to mutually reinforce and to uh, exchange information on both sides about scientific discoveries, scientific collaboration, but also to be able to spearhead any non-tariff challenges that should arise. Sustainability in farming is important for reasons that we're all aware with. You know, we're faced with, with climate change. We're seeing extreme weather events. In addition, we have growing populations. We also have changing demographics. So within Southeast Asia, within Vietnam, there is, of course, a growing middle class that is changing consumption patterns. People are more aware and they're more concerned with ensuring that they have safe food to eat, that they have reliable food to eat. 
and that it is healthy uh, and that they're getting the best nutrition from that food. So sustainable agriculture is about making sure that we can meet the needs of our population, that we can grow enough food that will feed our, our population and that they can get the, the safest, the healthiest, the most consistent food from our farming practices. But it's also about making sure that in the process of doing so, we are not adversely impacting the environment. And so there are many techniques that Canada has come up with through scientific research, through the experience and innovation uh, and new techniques. And that could include things like uh, zero-till farming, looking at new and innovative ways of, of seeding and crop rotation, making sure that the, the fertilizers that are being used are not causing damage, making sure that we have soil quality testing. Uh, there's a number of different uh, techniques that Canada uses. And it's all about uh, science. It's about making sure that we have soil health, that we're keeping our population's health and being innovative in the practices. Uh, and I'm happy to say that in Canada, even though the, the yields have increased consistently over the, the last few decades, the emissions that we produce have only increased marginally. And that's because as the demands have increased, so has the research and development and then innovative tools are put in place so that we can farm, have more food produced, but not create negative impacts on the environment. Uh, Minister McCulley, when he came recently to the Philippines to to launch the office, there was a, a wonderful example that was cited with regard to using Canadian seed potatoes. And the farmers explained to us, so these were primarily Indigenous farmers that came from remote areas and they were also small plot farmers. And they explained that simply by shifting to the Canadian seed potatoes that were from Prince Edward Island, they were able to increase their yields on a year-over-year -year basis uh, tenfold. Uh, and in the case of the seed potatoes, this is a recent uh, success story for the Canada-Vietnam agricultural story, and that is that these same, the very same seed potatoes that have created such a success in, in the Philippines have now been approved here in Vietnam, and I'm looking forward to see the kind of results it will yield for the farmers here in Vietnam, and hopefully we'll also see a significant increase in the yield. And I think there's other opportunities. So for example, as dairy capacity is improved or any type of livestock, the genetics from Canada are, are world-class. So there are genetics that could be brought in to help with breeding programs, to help with yields. Canada and Vietnam have a long-standing and mutually beneficial trade relationship in the agriculture and agro-food. Vietnam is the third largest destination for Canadian agricultural and food exports in ASEAN. In recent years, Vietnam and Canada have paid great attention to cooperation in the field of agriculture to jointly contribute to global food security and ensure the food supply chain. The Canadian government has sponsored the project Food Safety for Development and the project Coastal Communities Adapting to Climate Change for Vietnam, contributing to the development of safe and sustainable agricultural production. Since the implementation of the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership or CPTPP, the value of export and import of agricultural products between the two countries has increased from 623 million Canadian dollars in 2017 to more than 1 billion Canadian dollars by the end of 2023. We're talking about sales and trade and, and you know more income for the farmers. Um, do you see, you know, further opportunities for Absolutely, there is space for increased collaboration. I think, you know, it's tremendous if we look at the positive changes that have arisen since the, the ratification and implementation of CPTPP and how the trajectory of Canada-Vietnam trade 
especially in agriculture and agri-food, has increased. It's, it's phenomenal and it's a, a mutually complementary uh, trading arrangement. You know, of course, that Vietnam has a, a trade surplus. Canada has a trade deficit with Vietnam. So Vietnam sells about two times more to Canada than Canada sells to Vietnam. But the products that we sell to each other are complementary. So Vietnam, of course, has products like seafood and uh, tropical fruits like uh, coconuts and coconut byproducts and that they can sell coffee, that they can sell to Canada. Of course, in Canada, we don't produce coffee. We don't have the same types of seafood. We don't have coconuts because we have a very different climate. Uh, and so that's why we buy big quantities of those items from Vietnam. And similarly, Canada sells fruits that aren't grown here in Vietnam. If we look at things like uh, frozen blueberries that are sold uh, and other temporal uh, fruits, cherries and apples, but also wheat. Wheat is a significant export to, to Vietnam and that was also a recent success story. Uh, there had been changes in the regulatory system that allowed Canadian wheat to enter into the market. Canada has world-class wheat. It is used in various applications. So flour to make breads and pastries, which I know are loved very much in, in Vietnam, and noodles and, and pasta. So we've had some great successes in the last few years, and I have no doubt that that will only continue to grow. Well, I would say the, you know, the, the selection of Vietnam goes way beyond just a, a stop on, on my agenda. In fact, when the office was launched, there were stakeholder consultations that were conducted in, in Canada between officials at Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada and the Canadian Food Inspection Agency with the private sector. And the purpose was to find out where those companies were interested in doing more business, where they were looking at potential investments, where they saw the greatest opportunities for for increased exports and Vietnam featured uh, predominantly in those conversations and so the the office looks to bolster and amplify the the good work that the embassy is already doing so of course if we have trade and positive trade relationships like we do that means that the embassy has been doing a good job that our officials have been doing a good job that our companies are already connected and we want to build on that success. So making more resources available, making greater awareness of, of Canadian products in Vietnam, being able to make it more accessible both ways to be able to make it easier to do business. So uh, I hope to be doing many more trips to Vietnam and that my, my team will be able to do many more trips to Vietnam so that we can increase that regulatory collaboration, that we can support the efforts of, of the embassy and really put the agriculture and agri-food relationship on the footing where it, it deserves to be. Our, our trade volumes are high, they're positive, but it's just the tip of the iceberg in my opinion and I think there's so much more that we could be doing. Thank you very much. It's, it's been a real honor to have the opportunity to sit down and meet with you and I'd be delighted to come back in a few months and let you know the type of successes that we've seen in the early days of the office. Thank you. Thank you.